Hey Flosstube, it's Julie the Gulf Coast Stitcher. Today is Thursday, August 23rd and um, life's been crazy so I've been away for a few more days, normal, more than normal. Um, start with life updates. Um, many of you who follow me on Instagram, oops, sorry. I never, I never remember to do this. This is real life though, right? Tamara, that was you that just texted me. Because I'm hopeful that you're watching this. All right, how do I do this? Do not disturb airplane mode. Okay. Um, I guess before I talk, since that was Tamara, um, this Nana Stitches, it's a good, this is a good place for me to say, um, get well soon, girl. You got this. I am a three-time survivor of uh, these surgeries twice on my dominant side and once on my left side and I can tell you that it sucks but it's so much better in the long run. I had um, ulnar and radial nerve issues on both sides from years of repetitive motion. I mean I'm not going to stop repetitive motion cross stitching though am I? <laughs> um, but uh, the biggest I mean, I've already sent you some life, life hacks that we've gotten a giggle out of, but if there's one thing I can tell you, and of course this is not medical advice, this is just personal advice, the very best thing that you can do as soon as they clear you to is the itsy bitsy spider exercise because it's crazy how hard that is to do after surgery. So, if you're just watching floss tube or sitting at home, do your itsy bitsy spider. Just one, two, three, four. Of course, that's not medical advice, like I said, but, you know. It helped me a lot. By the third time, I started doing it before they even said I could, as soon as I could move my fingers a little bit, because it made my recovery so much faster. So that's that's that. So Tamara, get well soon. Well, I know you haven't had surgery yet, but she's having surgery Wednesday. So if you guys, um, if prayers are part of your life, or however you speak to the universe, send up a good well wish for Tamara, because we love you, girl. Um, the other, let's see, let's go back to, um, life updates. So if you follow me on Instagram, you know that last Thursday, so a week ago today, um, I had to make the decision to put to sleep my 17 year old, um, fur baby. I think for me, like it was time she, she was, well, you know, it's a quality of life thing. And, and when you know it's time, it was probably time like a few months before that, but, um, it's so hard to let go. So I think I was fine. I mean, I felt kind of blah, you know, I mean, it's, it's like this whole psychological thing that you're not supposed to play a role in that natural order of things. But, um, my vet said, you know, just remember this is the final, like, this is the last best gift that you can give her, um, which I know was true. It was very, like, I don't know if any of you have been through this before. Um, it's, it was super peaceful and, um, it, it really, you know, she, she just relaxed and drifted off to sleep. And I can say that that was, um, I hope that's how it is for all of our beloved pets that, that they, don't have a lot of suffrage and things like that. But I think mentally what was really hard for me was just that she was 17 and Sarah is 17 and a half. So that dog had been with me through literally like every life milestone. And I don't know how much you guys all know about my story, but uh, I was a single parent um, until Sarah was 13. Is that yeah, 13 maybe. 13, 14. Um, 13. And so, you know, it was just us and then our our pets. And she was just a, a part of the family and was there for lots of milestones. And it was just super emotional for me because that I know it was the right thing. Uh, I'm really not upset about it anymore. The first day or so was hard. So anyway, that's that. Um, what else is happening? Um, I'm still having dental issues and with a lot of persistence on my part and, um, support really from my friends and, uh, just continue, continuing to go to the dentist and saying like, things don't feel right. Something's not right. What's going on? 
and we've pretty much decided that I'm a clencher at night. I have a lot of the um, just straight up symptoms of, um, it's called like bruxism or like clenching or grinding your teeth at night. Um, of course, it's kind of like snoring, like you don't know that you do it unless somebody tells you because, hey, you're asleep. But I have all this, all of the symptoms of it. Um, so I was fitted for a night guard. So that doesn't come in for a few weeks, but I can't wait because I'm hopeful that that um, increases my uh, quality of sleep. And I'm hoping that um, I don't wake up so quite so sore and like the jaw and have headaches and stuff like that. So if you haven't had impressions done, mm -mm, it's not fun. I did not like it one bit, but it's not, it, I mean, it's necessary for me to um, try to get that taken care of. So what else? School. I started school on Monday. Um, I'm taking five classes because I'm insane and also because I'm ready to just wrap it up already and get on with my life. I'm fine with all of my classes except for... I mean, if you've known me for any length of time, you know how fun accounting was. Well, I'm taking, um, I have to take uh, finance and economics. It's a it's a combined class, so you have like half of it's econ and half of it's finance. And logically, I get it all. I get it when my teacher walks me through it, but um, a little, I have a little anxiety about the exams with that class because there's only three grades the entire semester and there are three exams all worth 33 and a third percent of your grade. So yikes. So there may be a few, you know, a few days where I'm like incommunicado because I am trying desperately to um, cram in as much knowledge as I can about that subject. Everything else is great though. I'm taking a law class, which is right in my wheelhouse and there it's going to be great. Um, taking a compensation class, which, you know, not necessarily the most thrilling topic, but necessary in business. What else am I taking? Um, ISO 1000, which is like quality control. Um, again, kind of dry material, but I get it. It's not tough. So I'm missing one. Anyway, five classes. So, um, that kind of makes me, that that leads me into a floss tuber that I've started watching. Thanks to Ginger Gerald's interview, I found Mrs. Vensel, which, who is Rachel, and she, I think her, like, tagline is the cross-stitch counselor. So she's um, a counselor, I don't know if it's, and I did not watch video one or two, which probably is the where I should have started so that I would know more about her. Um, she's a counselor. I don't know if it's mental health or... Um, you know, just therapy. I'm not sure. But I guess all therapy is mental health. I don't know. Anyway, she has great, like, I don't know, just little life advice moments. And she always marks, like, at this point, it's going to, we're going to have some chat about that. If you're just here for cross stitch, you can turn it off at that point. But she um, introduced me to a book called Eat That Frog. So in my, um, in my compensation class, I think it is, I had to um, pick a book applicable to leadership that I would um, basically do a research project on. And they want it written more as like a glowing editorial. So it has to, like if you read a book and you're not really into it, that's not the one you want to do for your report. You definitely want your project to be on... Um, it's a pitch, really. Like, I, I'm supposed to find a book, read it, and be able to pitch it, you know, sincerely to my colleagues. So she mentioned this in her video. I'm not sure what number video it is, but I haven't even gotten the book from Amazon yet. I ordered it. It should be here today. But in it, she discusses Mark Twain's quote, and I'm paraphrasing here horribly, but basically, like, if you... If first thing in the morning you wake up you sh and you eat a frog, you can go on knowing that's probably the worst thing that's going to happen to you today. And if it's your job to eat two frogs, eat the biggest one first. And it's like a procrastination lesson. So literally since I've watched her video, that was before I even knew I was going to have this book, pro this book um, project. I 
tell myself every day now when I wake up and I haven't even read this book. I just saw her her discussing it. I wake up and I'm like, Ugh, eat the frog, eat the frog. Um, it could be something as small as like, I need to get all the laundry together. Let me just eat that frog and get it done. Or, you know, schoolwork or going to run errands or whatever. I'm like, get up, eat the frog, move on and, and enjoy the rest of whatever's on your plate. So, um, yeah, I can't wait till that book gets here and I'll share more about it then. So thanks, Rachel, Mrs. Vensel, for um, opening our eyes to that. That's such a that's such a uh, procrastination is rampant. And I think stitchers are probably horrible at it because, I mean, I think we're probably good procrastinators because we buy stuff that we're going to get to someday, right? I mean, I have a whole business built around um, what we're going to all stitch someday. So eat the frog, start the sampler, put the laundry in, go get gas in your car, whatever it is that you have to do, eat the frog. So, um, I love that. Then the next thing, let's see, what else am I all into? Okay, so Sarah Elliott at Stitchology, um, her and I have texted back and forth a little bit here and there because we have similar tastes on things. And I told her to listen to Up and Vanished podcast directed by Payne Lindsay. It is phenomenal. If you're into mysteries, you don't have to be into true crime. Like, not that's not really even a necessary thing to enjoy this podcast. But if you are into um, mysteries, spoiler alert, do not Google anything about this case. Because it truly takes twists and turns. And... Um, there's an ending that you just don't, don't see coming. So no spoilers, please don't put any spoilers in the comments. Um, but Up and Vanish is the, um, investigative story surrounding the disappearance of Tara Grinstead in Osceola, Georgia. So it's fantastic. And if you do know the, like the ending and how it turns out, it's still a good listen because, um, the information and the, Investigative work of this young guy, Payne Lindsay, is really fantastic. So, um, I saw there. I saw on Instagram some super cute T-shirts that say "If I vanish, call Payne Lindsay," and it has his um one eight hundred tip line phone number, which I thought was great. Um, so I finished that, and that is a huge podcast. Like it went on for like a year and a half or something like that. So how podcasts work is if you you subscribe to them just like you do a YouTube video. And they release content on a regular basis, kind of like we do with Flosstube, um, but it's just audio, which is great because let me tell you something, while you're eating your frog, you could put your phone on speaker and I put mine in the back pocket of my pants and I walk around the house and eat all the frogs because, and you'd be surprised how much listening you can get done. Same with audiobooks. It's basically like an audiobook that's broke up into weekly segments. Um, but you'd be surprised how much listening time there is in a day. Um, so yes, Payne Lindsay, Up and Vanish, fantastic. So when I finish that, and it's a long podcast, now that it's already happened and it's over, you can go back and listen to all of the episodes. So Up and Vanish season two just came out this past Monday. So every Monday they'll release a podcast episode. So that I have to wait for. It's kind of like watching things on cable TV versus Netflix. Like the older shows, Netflix, you can zip right through and binge watch. Same goes with podcasts. Um, podcasts are free. You do not have to have an iPhone. You do not have to have a Galaxy. Um, you just have to have an app that's a podcast listener. So mine, of course, um, I have an iPhone. It comes preloaded on, uh, on your iPhone home screen. My mom has a Samsung and we just... I just went to the app store and looked up podcast and the, you know, the top rated one popped up. It was free too. And I got her all set up on that. So she is, she was texting me last night. She binge is binge listening to the story of um, Tara Grinstead. So after I finished that, Payne Lindsay has a second podcast that came out. Um, I guess, I don't know if it was at the same time or right at the end of the last one called Atlanta monster, which is, this story of the um, Atlanta child murders, which were, I believe they started like in 79. So I, I would, I was alive, but I wasn't very old. And I didn't really know that much about them. But I will tell you that 
Um, there was a lot, a lot of mistakes made in that case. And as someone who's been a police officer and who's worked in the judicial system, and like I said, I'm currently um, taking law classes, there were some critical errors in that case, and it, it's fascinating to listen to. Also, it, it just makes you question, like, at the beginning, I think you'll probably feel like, oh, the guy who's in prison for this, Wayne Williams, he's the one who definitely did this. Then there'll be some times that you have doubts. Then there'll be some times that you're certain, and it's one of those things. So I love that. It's fantastic. So that's Atlanta Monster, also by um, Tenderfoot TV is the producer. So it's Payne Lindsay is the the guy who does is the man behind it. And then what am I listening to now? Cause I finished both of those. Like I literally listened to it in the grocery store yesterday, finishing up Atlanta monster podcast. I'm on to now. I don't even know what the name of it is, but I can tell you that. And pod, like I said, they're free. So it's totally 150% worth getting the app because if you like, oh, I don't want to spend another $12 on audio on Audible or $14. Of course, I have my phone on airplane mode, so I see nothing. I'm listening to... My phone just died. So there you go. I don't know. Um, I want to say that it's called Sworn. It's called Sworn, which is um, a much less involved podcast. In other words, like on that one, there's like each case... Um, is like three episodes, so you don't have to get involved in a great big story. So that's what's going on there. Love, love, love. Um, so that's it for that. Um, as far as finishes, I shared this on Instagram. For those of you who follow me, this is Arakintosh, which I absolutely love him. I love his little frame. He's so stinking cute. This is the Charlie Harper. You guys know I love Charlie Harper. I love, um, I guess I love all the Charlies. I love Charles Wysocki. This was a fun stitch and um, I used Kitten Stitchers framing tutorial to pin my own frame. So this is the second thing I framed in like two weeks. So I was pretty proud about that. He's been done for a little while, but I did him on 14 count Ada and I got to tell you, is it 14? No, I lied. I did him on 16 count. Um, it was a pleasure. It was easy, heavy coverage. Um, it was nice. It was a nice break. So this is Rackintosh. There will be more Charlie Harper finishing in my future, albeit I have no idea how soon I'll get all of that done. So whips. This whip has been in timeout. This is my Enchanted Sleigh. I'm doing it on Navy Ada, 16 count. I love everything about this, let me just say. Um, however, I was super mad because this color right here, uh, all the, well, they're all different colors, but the, I think it's this gold, the one that runs horizontal here. I'm sitting in my chair, my chariot, stitching away, been working on it for like two hours, and I go to get my floss to continue with that color. It's color 781, I will never forget it. And it's nowhere to be found. Literally evaporated. So I get out of my chair, have Dan pull my chair out, look under it, get the flashlight, look in, in my project bag that sits next to my chair, pull everything out, it literally vanished, which is ironic because I'm listening to the podcast the day before and of Atlanta Monster, uh, the Wayne Williams story, and I'm like, you know, how if somebody does if somebody commits a crime, like how do you, no? It was the Tara Grinstead one. Like, there's a glove involved that was left behind, potentially. Maybe it was planted. Maybe it was left behind. That's up for you to decide as a listener. And I'm like, how are you going to lose a latex glove when you are supposed to be keeping up with all your stuff if you're in the middle of an abduction of someone? And then I lost the 781. And I went literally nuts trying to find it. Of course, my girlfriend's like, Robbie's like, I've got, you know, 
I got some of that color probably if you need it. Don't don't freak out. No, I had to go, as you know, I had to go to AC Moore like post haste and buy it because um I was in the groove on that chart. I still haven't found it. So the lesson here is that I would be horrible at um tying up all my loose ends if I were involved in something like that. And I see now how it can happen. So thank you, universe, for pointing out to me that even people who think they are smart and even people who are pretty organized can completely lose something in plain sight and it's never to be found by them again. Now, somebody could walk in my house and be like, oh, there's your, what's that floss doing over there? And that's what happens, you know. But I bought a new one because I couldn't, I just couldn't handle that anymore. So I'm going to pick him back up today, I think after I get all my frogs done. Then, because I was mad at him and put him in timeout, I needed something quick and fast and I started um, Americana Sampler by the City Stitcher. I'm going to, um, I'll probably pass this chart when I'm done. It's, I just have the letters and then there's one row of stars at the bottom. All this Quaker motifs are, th these Quaker style letters, I'm really into those. It, on the chart, it has all of this, like, all of the alphabet is boxed in by a backstitched black line. Mm-mm. I don't like backstitching, and I don't think it's necessary in this chart. So, it's kind of wonky because I've got it pulled pretty tight in a Q-snap, but um, super cute. I'm stitching it with silk. Um, I'm stitching it with um, um, a Verisois that I had on hand from somebody's stash that I bought. So, that's that. Now let's get on to the um, quite extravagant haul. Um, save all lectures because I know I don't need to buy anything. Like that's 150% like clear. <laughs> but I couldn't pass a few things up because that's what we do. Um, Vicky at Stitch and Button sent me some fobs, which I have very limited fob like so I had um, a stitchy kindness where someone sent me like a little keychain fob. The, these are su super cute. So, oh, I almost dropped that. So this is going to be with my Christmas stuff, little cardinals, little birds, or as we say in this house for some reason, burbs, in a little burb house. So this are super cute for a holiday accoutrement. And then this is... I'm using this on my scissors now. It's a little, I don't know if you can see that. It's a little um, flag heart. And on the back it says made in the USA. It's smaller, but you know what? This is a much lighter weight um, fob, so that works out for me. Super cute. They're like little stone hearts. Love that. And then the PS de Resistance is sharks. Because I love sharks as much as I love birds. It's true. So, this guy's bigger and heavier and a little bit clunkier, but my goodness, I mean, look at him. So cute. So, got those. Let's see what else we got going on. Okay. So, I talked last week about, like, don't underestimate the power of just contacting a designer from a company that you love, even if they're out of print and no longer producing. I'm not going to say they're not around because clearly they're around. But um, you'd be surprised how many of them probably have like stacks of stuff in their house or in storage. And um, a lot of them have websites where you just order directly. Um, Brenda Keys, I had no problem ordering from her. I was a little nervous because I didn't hear anything back to any of my emails. Didn't hear anything back on my like tracking or here you go, your package is on the way. None of that. And I knew it was coming from England. And um it showed up in like 10 days, so just ran. Like, I didn't know it was going to show up because I was like, oh, I just spent some money and it may have went into the zeitgeist, but um, it was fine. So then McKenna had her epic score, her epic estate sale score, which opened my eyes to um, the Scarlet Letter charts because I'm relatively new to um, hoarding and I don't have a local LNS. I am my own LNS, so... I hadn't really seen a lot of those before. So I showed a few I got last week. There may be, I may be showing you some stuff I got la that I showed you last time here. Forgive me. Um, let's see. 
it's not really that much. This is the bird sampler. I may have shown this already. I just love it. I love the geometric funkiness and birds. So I have it like I started kidding it just because I had just ordered some Belsois and these will work great in this chart. So this is Belsois collard greens, vanilla pudding, and rustique. So that'll be awesome. And then I have a MPI floating around in this bag too, which is one that I'm going to use for the teal-ish color. So that's the bird sampler. I just went ahead and threw those silks in this bag because I was like, yeah, this will happen someday. This will be a frog one day. And a good frog, not like a stitchy frog. And let's see, let's just get, let me just go through the scarlet letters that I bought. And let me tell you that I didn't pay more than like 11 bucks for any of these. Some of them were even cheaper than that. So I thought that was awesome. This is probably one of my very favorites. This is the American Quaker Band Sampler because I love those big, I love these letters. That's a thing for me. I just do. That, I don't know why. Um, let's see. Rebecca Nutt. Again, you'll see that I love the letters. Kef, we need some more um, alphabets in the world. I especially need more alphabets in this house. Ruth Ann Stokes, 1835. Does this not remind y'all of something like Sally Spencer? Totally does me. So I think this will be a good companion piece to Sally. This is a, a, a teeny as far as teeny goes. It's only five by seven stitching area. Um, and I just like, I like, again, I like how it's, it's kind of like wonky as far as the band, the border doesn't go all the way around. It just stops. Like somebody was stitching on it and they were like, I'm done. On to the next thing. You know what? This probably became... This is at the Allentown Art Museum in Allentown, Pennsylvania. The um, original is. And you know what? This probably just became an abandoned whip for a young girl. And she was like, nope, I'm over it. I'm on to something else. So that's probably been a habit that we've had. Us needle women have and needle men have had forever. Okay, this one, oh my gosh, I love this. Abigail Gould Sampler. Okay, so whenever, if you're not into Adam and Eve Sampler, either you're into Adam and Eve Samplers or you're not. There's not a whole lot of middle ground on that. We know that. But what's cool about this is that they're reminiscent of Adam and Eve, but they're in contemporary Americana dress. Um, they suspect this was from New York State. It was originally stitched on homespun with wool. Um, and when it's finished, it's 10 by 12. So slap that puppy in an 11 by 14 frame and call it a day. Look at that. Look at them. They're so cute. And airborne bird, which you don't see a whole lot, at least not a good, um, depiction of one. Sometimes they look kind of like pterodactyls or something, but I love it. I love this. It's doable. It's a doable size. I love it. Into the frog pile. Um, Michelle Garrett. Go buy this. We need to stitch this. Even if all we do are the birds. This is the Sarah Harvey 1737 sampler. Uh, does it say where it's at? No, a lot of times they tell you where the original is located. Look at those mosaic birds. Like, if you're not into alphabets and you don't want to do all that, you could just do the birds. I mean, look at those guys. I, lo I love them. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'll do, like, it's pretty big. It's 18, 18 by 9 and 8. So, that, it's pretty hefty. But you could totally skip the top half. Like, for real. You could start right there. And just go from there down. If you were so inclined. 
I love it. I love those birds. So I thought that was crazy cool. Michelle, I want to see you get up on that. And um, Lisa, I don't know why this made me think of you, but it did. Lisa Smith, look at this. How cool is this? I love the floral, like, I love it. Birds in flight again. But can we talk about that windmill? And those birds that look so... You talk about some snooty looking birds? They're looking over each other's shoulder like, uh, that might... You might live in that windmill, but I live in this big mansion over here. So, yes, I love that. So that's Mary Ann Body, 1789. This is from the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. So, these charts... I haven't even opened this one. Let me tell you, they're... They're really nice, lots of information, um, totally 150% worth the very cheap investment of buying them. They're crazy expensive on eBay. It's up to you. You can go directly to the source and get them for, like, real cheap. So, then there was a small, very small, speaking of eBay, I just... I don't know how, I must have had a safe search for sa samplers involving Sarah's, is all I can think, but look at this guy. Sarah's Crows, it's praiseworthy stitches. Um, look at, look at this! Lisa Smith, have you done this? I mean, the picture, of course, does not do this justice, but look at that floral border, and there is like a thousand birds. I, th I love this. Look at that, Sarah's Crows. And it says on the back, was it on the back that I read this? Um, this graph was inspired by Susan's daughter, Sarah. When she was very small, Sarah was sure that the crows were outside just waiting for her to appear. This is for her, Pam and Susan. I love it. Love it. So, um, I don't know when I'll ever get to it, but this is happening. And what size is this? 187 by 206. So it's not insane. There is an over one verse um, underneath here. I can't even read what it says. Um, of course, it has the, you know, when you see this, remember me. And then the path life shows I follow every day. Hope, peace. I can't read the rest. It's so small. I might omit that because I'm not into over one stitching. It's not a reproduction. Um, I don't feel compelled that I need to include that. Um, so I'm thinking that I may do this portion and then just bring them top birds down. I don't know yet. But this picture does not do this justice. But this, these flowers, ah, this is happening. That's going in the pile. And then because why not? 30 birds by Hands to Work. I had to count them like three times, but there in fact are 30 birds on this tiny little chart. I don't know what size this chart is. It still has the original hands to work tape on it. It's small. This is a small. Ninety by eighty. So cute. Yeah. Gosh, now I'm looking at this and I'm like, I need to kit this up right now. Stitched in DMC. Uh... So as I've been shopping for frames, 10 by 10 is kind of a common square that you can purchase um, pretty easily in most craft stores. So if I do this, if I do this on 28 count, it'll be like almost 7 by 7. I could get away with a 10 by 10 frame, yeah. So cute. And that's almost it, guys. Almost. Then there was the eBay saved search that made me squeal with delight because clearly somebody did not know how much things go for, which isn't that always a win? Like, I'm trying to put this up. Isn't that always a win whenever you see something on eBay and you're like, do they not know that these cost more than that? It's a moral, there's like a moral moment where I pause and say, should I, should I just take this as a win? Or should, 
something be mentioned here. So what I normally do there, if it's not a buy it now, is I put like what I think the fair market um, bid should be as my max bid. And sometimes somebody else is out there looking and sometimes somebody isn't. And then I can sleep at night because I'm like, I did not rob those people for those charts. Um, nobody else wanted them. This is not the case. This was a buy it now. Okay. Y'all, I love Charles Wysocki. I love, um, I have a really weird taste because I love like super primitive things. And then I love like Americana, like pop artish things like Charlie Harper and um, Charles Wysocki. But this was, I was real excited about this. So I got a lot of three of Charles Wysocki books. Um, books, they're like double chart leaflets really on cardstock though. Book one is My Hometown. So cute. I think this is the one I'm going to do first. Yes, this is the one that I plan on eventually doing first. Um, this is the Haberdashery. Because, I mean, what a fantastic word haberdashery is. For those of you people who love, like, um, BBC shows and love Downton Abbey, you should watch, um, what is it called? I want to say The Palace, but that is not it. The, I can't remember. I just had a complete, like, it'll come. It begins with a P, I'm sure of it. Anyway. There's an awesome show on Netflix about, like, the early department stores. I want to say it's The Palace, but I know that that's not it. It'll come to me. I'll put it in the show notes. Um, it reminds me of this. Totally. Uh, let's see. That's book one. Book two is Town and Country. Love this. So you have the Old Glory Farms and a bake shop. And when all of these are stitched on 16 count, they're, except for one of them, they all will be finished as like 9 by 12, so 11 by 14 frames will work. And then Cape Cod Summer, book four. I mean, could you just die at this? Look at that. I love it. Um, book three, so ironically, I would have bought all of them if they were there. Book three is like kind of weird. It has some still life, Charles Wysocki. It has like a pumpkin and a cornucopia. I, I would have passed it on anyway. Um, not necessary because this lot of three super good condition Charles Wysocki uh, booklets did not include book three because they must have thought the same thing I did. And... It was $5 for all three of them. I don't ever, like, this is a not really retirement area. It's more of a vacation area. So our thrift stores hardly ever have haul. I'm always so crazy jealous of great haul that comes out of thrift stores for, like, we have really good, like, home things people put in their condos and good clothes. But we don't get a lot of um, stitchy stuff, stitchy, stitchy stash in the thrift stores. But... I'm super jealous when that happens, that someone gets a really good score like that. I feel like this was a score for five bucks, free shipping. So I happen to ship stuff every single day except for Sundays. And I know that that meant that this was really more like $2 because it came two day, um, whatever, parcel post. So love that. So that's it. Um, that's, I know it seems like a lot, but honestly, that was for like a month's worth of stuff. Um, and I'm pretty happy with all of those things. Like I said, my Scarlet Letters were super cheap and the Charles Wysocki was basically given to me. All right. So I don't have a ton of stuff to show you for the shop, but I'm going to show you a few things. Um, this, it, with Brenda Gervais with I Needle and Thread, we don't see a ton of reproduction samplers out of her um, design house anymore. This one is a stunner. Look at that. Look at the dogs. So cute. So this is Betsy Snyder, um, 1822, faithfully reproduced by Brenda Gervais. I can't imagine how poppin' great this is going to be. Um, I love the colors. Blue corn, tartan plaid, yield gold, which will all come out way bolder than this picture does. There's that. Stacy Nash primitives. Pam and Steph put whales on things. 
I think that this is super cute. I don't know. I I want to stitch this for an exchange, but I'm going to the Midwest Qua Midwest Cross Stitchers Retreat in October, as I've said a thousand times because I'm super excited. And there's a smalls exchange, but it's supposed to be winter. I mean, autumn, like autumn fall. But how cute is that? I'll stick with the theme because I'm supposed to, but I don't want to. Um, these two I bought because Heather, the perfect, the imperfectly perfect stitcher, or maybe I inverted that, um, she made me because she put them on her stitchy wish list. So I was like, I have to, um, I have to buy these for myself. And I did. And these are booklets. Like, this one has all three of these situations in it. This one has all of these, so you get multiple pages. The prices are what, $10.95 or $11, whatever. Um, the only caveat to these that may make them um, my personal copies are going... I'm not going to keep them. I bought them, uh, bought some for the shop, but there is insane amounts of backstitching, which I've done a Stony Creek before. Um, I'm not into it, guys. I can't, I can't bring myself to do it, to want to do it, um, to the level that you need to here. But look, look what it brings to that. So there are a whole set of these, um, in the village. There's winter, summer, spring, autumn, and Christmas. It's a thousand degrees here still, so I was like, ooh, I'll start with the wintry ones. And I'm going to be listing those, because I know that they would just sit forever in the stash. Speaking of which, like, I need to go through and do a stash cleanse. That needs to be my frog for another day. Because, as y'all know, like, when you first start in this hobby or if you first start, like, hoarding in this hobby, you're like, ooh, I love that. I love that. I need that. I love that. You discover stash unloads. You're just bye, bye, bye. Um, and then your taste change. And then the amount, like, like, something like this chart that's so big and beautiful the amount of time that would take away from what I really enjoy doing, which is not backstitching, um, I'm just not willing to spend it. So I need to go through and just do a big de-stash. Um, I just need to. So yeah, that is that is a frog that needs to be eaten someday soon. I'm slept full on frogs today, though, that's for sure. Okay, where's the other one of these? Man. Oh, I was using it as a backstitch. So, Yvonne, the Night Owl Stitcher, said that these were her, um, like, unicorns, and she met someone at the Silver Needle Retreat, and they were like, hey, I have those. So, they sent her the original cardstock, which I thought was so cool, and I was like, man, those are awesome. They look like, they look like 70s, like, to me, these look like these would be in the Brady's Kitchen, if you're as old as me, you understand who that is. Um, I totally love them, and... I was like, oh, I'll have to keep my eye open for those, you know, if I can ever find them. The very next day, they were reprinted and listed on Hoffman. So, these are paper reprints. I know none of us love that, but um, at, least they're, at least they're available. So, both Prairie Garden 1 and Prairie Garden 2 available in the shop. I mean, I wish they were cardstock, but it is what it is. But what is cardstock and is awesome is the Crosswing Collection, Redbirds and Berries, I've shown this before. Um, I sold out of it twice, and it's back in stock. So, and there's some back stitching on this, but you know what? It's not a lot. I, it's just a little bit around the birds, and I don't mind that. Okay, carriage house samplings, Americana. How cool is this, y'all? It's stitched in silk. It is. Those colors are popping. I mean, I love it. Look at this guy. He, he's just riding up on his horse. I love this. Americana. The Heart and Hand We Santa 2018 is available now. Um, he's kind of glary. Oh, there we go. He is so stinking cute. The thing about these little Santas that, like, throw you when you're kidding them up is, like, it takes a lot of colors. It's all DMC. It's not a big deal. But it's, like, 15 colors on this little guy. But the cool thing is, here's a here's a pro tip. Not that I'm a pro by any means, but um, if you 
get you a project bag, make it your heart and hand Santa project bag. A lot of the colors you see over and over again, even multiple years. So just throw all, like grab some DMC, throw it in there and use it for whatever, else, you know, for the next Christmas one. But oh my gosh, he's super cute. I love his little suit. I like how it's like gold and he has polka dot pants. So cute. So the, that one came out. New, brand new release from Blackbird is Loose Feathers um, for the Birds number eight. This is Summer, the Summer Beaming Forth. This came out last week. It came out like on Friday. Super cute. And then Brenda Gervais. We've all been waiting for these. I know some. See, some people are on auto ship directly from her because they signed up for that at Market, which I will be included in that group next year when I attend Market. But as y'all know, I didn't open my shop until April, so I didn't get in on that. So it takes me a few extra weeks. Thank y'all so much for the ones of you who are not like who are who are shop loyal to me and and to some of the other some of the other shops on online who like understand that. You, you know, we don't have it, like, instantaneously. Thank you. Thank you for that. I really appreciate that. So, what is this? Strawberries and Stripes. Ah, so cute. Bird, strawberries. What's not to love about this? Um, it's only 47 by 48. So, that is so little. And see, why can't I... Like, that would be good for the Midwest cross stitchers Retreat if it wasn't summer. But I'll come up with something. I'm really racking my brain over what I'm going to do for my smalls exchange. Um, and then to the from me, also 49 by 48. So I'm assuming there's going to be some of these for every season is what I would guess. It's so cute. Let's turn it where you can see it. Queen of the Needle. We've all seen this one. It just screams crazy summer lady with her tomato stitchy pin cushion. Um, it's cute though. I, I like it. And then I told you about Betsy Snyder. And then I did not, I didn't love this, um, until I saw it in person. And then I loved it. I think someone on Instagram stitched them side by side, like looking at each other. Oh my goodness. It was amazing on one piece. So that's, if I, if I ever get to it, that's what'll happen. I'm not holding my breath on this because I have a thousand other things that I absolutely want to stitch. Like every Leisure Art Santa for the past 40 years and all of the Prairie Schoolers and all of the samplers that have ever been created since like 1740 or whatever. Um, but I like his big man pants. They're so cute. And the birds are really good on this. So Farm Yard Parade. I'm sure we will see... These two characters, um, what is it, Ollie and Aura, I'm pretty sure we're going to see them for all seasons, I hope, because they're super cute. So that's it. I didn't have a ton of stuff for the shop this week. Um, this time of year, I get, I'm all new to this as far as um, sticking out, you know, being a whole calendar year in. I'm not there yet. Um, but the releases have really slowed down, as I imagine everyone is doing things with their families for the summer. And they're like hardcore gearing up to what they're going to release for Christmas. And then right on the heels of Christmas comes market. So I'm kind of assuming that we're going to see um, some things start rolling out um, a little more frequently. But there's so many things that are from days gone by that are so awesome too. So I always try to find that um, when I'm digging when I'm digging in the deep recesses of the uh, distributors. Um, I do have some, I know so many of you are doing the pumpkin um, hollow farm stitch along with Priscilla and Chelsea. I have these in stock. Um, just want to let y'all know that they're not new. I've had them for a while, but I know some people are looking, looking for it. What else? I believe I have one copy left of home for the holidays. So if you're on the fence on doing the Tis the Season sale that starts on Labor Day weekend, um, I think I've got one copy left. Uh, I, I'll probably order a few more, but honestly, I mean, that that I would be interested to know how many of those I've sold this year. It's in the hundreds, which for a small shop like me with a pretty, you know, defined uh, customer base, I was like super 
I was super impressed by how many of those sold. Um, what else do I have shop wise to tell you? Um, Floss Club is closed right now. Um, everybody's got their invoices. I'll reopen that. I just try to keep it manageable, really. Um, I will periodically reopen it. If you're interested, just message me. Um, I'll see, you know, what I can do. Um, sorry, I just got a notification. Even though everything is on, do not disturb. Um, what else was I going to tell you about Floss Club? Okay, so next, the next month's Floss Club that will be coming out will be um, Harvest Halloween themed. Then we'll have like a Thanksgiving themed. Then the following month will be, um, or like a Thanksgiving-ish. I know not everybody does Thanksgiving. I have a lot of international customers. Um, and then I'll do a Christmas type set. And then after that, I'm going to go on um, a more orderly process. I don't know if that's the right word. So a lot of you are in um, 3L Threads um, nest egg program with Trish. Trisha, which is awesome, um, and she goes alphabetical, uh, like, from the, the beginning um, wh of whatever, um, like, if you if you subscribe to her Classic Color Work, she starts at the beginning and goes back that way. I think I'm going to do the same thing, but I'll start at the end. So those of you who are in, are in both Floss Clubs, I mean, eventually you'll have some overlap, um, in which case you can decide, you know, I'm good. Um, but I do a variety pack of Classic Color Works Gentle Arts and Weeks. So I've got some room there for there to be some variety. So after we get through the holidays, first of the year, uh, we'll start again. We'll start in reverse alphabetical order. So let me know what you guys think about that. I think it, at this point, I've done this for a few months now, and I'm like trying to keep up with the ones I've already ordered is the trick. And, you know, Trisha was really onto something there when she was like, oh, I need to be able to keep up with what I ordered. Besides, if you're building a stash, it's a cool way to do it. I have fun, like, randomly selecting the colors. But, like I said, I think once we get through the holidays, just for ease of use, I'm going to do some reverse orders. But you still won't know exactly what you're going to get because, like I said, I do combine those three, um, those three companies in one floss club pack. I do have some like random leftover floss clubs from um, like unclaimed or it, at first it was difficult to like manage or knowing how much to order so I have a few extras so I'll probably de-stash those on my Instagram sometime. That'll be a frog for another day though. So keep your eyes peeled for that. It's fine if you're in the club and you want to buy more a second set of something. Um, they're all random. It is what it is but I think I'll de-stash that. I just have the desire to like de-stash things right now. Like I want to go through my charts. I have so much fabric that I want to go through and like split with people, which there are a few of you who I'm already doing that with where I'm like, hey, I have a whole yard of this. Do you want to buy half of it from me? Because it's a, I have a lot and I am I know that I'm not going to use it like in the next 10 years. <laughs> so I'm feeling the need to um, kind of, purge some of that stuff. However, of course I feel that need when I'm taking five classes and super busy with the shop and, you know, have two kids in school. So, um, I don't know how quick I'll get to act on that. But if I eat one frog in the morning every day, I should be able to get through stuff. Um, the only other thing to share with you guys is complete like weird life thing is Chegg. C-H-E-G-G. -G. So if you have kids in college or you're in college yourself, do yourself a favor and go to Chegg.com. Um, Chegg.com offers some online tutoring, which is super helpful. It got me through accounting. I'm not going to lie. I used so much tutoring on there. However, the coolest thing is their book rentals. So, example, um, my compensation textbook to rent at the college. Now, bear in mind, I do not have a GI Bill. I pay for my education out of my own pocket. From the bookstore, $210 to rent, to rent a used book. On Chegg, $15.99. Same book. Um, shipped directly to your house, and in the box with the Chegg books comes a buxom lip gloss, dead on the floor, like Kef. I'm not kidding. Here's the one that came in today's box. How cute is this? The color is Dolly, if anybody wants to know. Um, 
a Red Bull, a Buxom lip gloss, a coupon for HelloFresh, a coupon for Shutterfly, and uh, some candy. And I've ordered several books and they've all come with like a care package, which is, I think, awesome, like customer service. And um, shipping's included. You just keep your box. You send it back in the box at the end of the semester. If you fail to send it back, you'll be paying the couple hundred bucks. But I mean, that's not a problem for me. Uh, I was able to get all of my textbooks for all five classes for under $200 for renting. Why did I not know about this? I used Check, like I said, to help me um, with tutoring for accounting. I didn't even realize they had a book rental, and I happened to just see it on somebody. Somebody posted, you know, where should I help my kid get college textbooks? Do not waste the money at the college bookstore. Amazon does a rental, which is quite a bit pricier than Chegg, but still way cheaper than the bookstore. And Chegg, I can't tell you enough. Um, I wish I would have done it three semesters ago now. I could have saved myself well in excess of like $2,000 in books. Books that I can never use because where they get you is they put like an online code in there that you need for your class. So they're like, oh, we can't buy this back from you because you already used the code. All lies. You can buy codes through Chegg too. So... Um, yeah, just wanted to share that with you. So that's it. I love you guys. Have a wonderful, um, rest of your week. Have a great weekend. I pray that y'all get some good stitching in. I just love y'all and look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.